Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Today's my lecture is about pulmonary circulation. The blood volume of lungs is about 450 milliliters, which is about 9% of total blood volume of entire circulatory system. Approximately 70 milliliters of this pulmonary blood volume is in the pulmonary capillaries and the remainder is divided about equally between the pulmonary arteries and veins. Under various physiological and pathological conditions, the quantity of blood in the lung can vary from as little as one half of normal up to twice of normal. For instance, when a person blows out air so hard that high pressure is built up in the lungs, such as when blowing a trumpet, as much as 250 milliliters of blood can be expelled from the pulmonary circulatory system into systemic circulation. Also, loss of blood from systemic circulation by hemorrhage can be partly compensated for by the automatic shift of blood from lungs into systemic vessels. The lungs has two circulation. First one, a high pressure low flow circulation. Secondly, low pressure high flow circulation. At first, high pressure low flow circulation which supplies systemic arterial blood to trachea, bronchial tree, supporting tissue of lung and outer course of pulmonary arteries and veins. The bronchial arteries which are the branches of thoracic aorta supply most of the systemic arterial blood at a pressure that is only slightly lower than the aortic pressure. Secondly, low pressure high flow circulation supplies venous blood from all parts of the body to alveolar capillaries where oxygen is added and carbon dioxide is removed. Pulmonary artery and its arterial branches carry blood to the alveolar capillaries for gas exchange. And pulmonary veins that return the blood to left atrium to be pumped by left ventricle through systemic circulation. Lungs receive the whole amount of blood that is pumped out from right ventricle. Output of blood per minute is same in both right and left ventricle which is about 5 liters. Thus, the lungs accommodate amount of blood which is equal to the amount of blood accommodated by all other parts of the body. Then pulmonary blood pressure. The pulmonary blood vessels are more distensible than systemic blood vessel. So blood pressure is less in pulmonary blood vessel. Thus, the entire pulmonary vascular system is a low pressure bed. In pulmonary circulation, there are some peculiarities. At first, pulmonary arteries carries oxygenated blood from heart to lung and pulmonary veins carries oxygenated blood from lungs to heart. Secondly, pulmonary artery has a thin wall which is about one third of the thickness of systemic aortic wall. Wall of other pulmonary blood vessel is also thin. Smooth muscle coat is not well developed in pulmonary blood vessels. True arterioles have less smooth muscle fibers. Thirdly, pulmonary blood vessels are highly elastic and more distensible. Thirdly, pulmonary vascular system is a low pressure system which is one eighth of systemic circulation. Fifth, vascular resistance in pulmonary circulation is very less which is only one tenth of systemic circulation. At sixth, it contains nine percent of entire blood volume. In seventh, pulmonary capillaries are larger than the systemic capillaries. Pulmonary capillaries are also dense and have multiple anastomoses. So, each alveolus occupies a capillary basket. In number eight, Lungs has three zone of pulmonary circulation. In nine, it is equal to cardiac output. Last, presence of physiological shunt in pulmonary circulation. Pulmonary arterial pressure. Systolic pressure is about 25 millimeter of mercury. Diastolic pressure is about 10 millimeter of mercury. And mean arterial pressure is about 15 millimeter of mercury. Pulmonary capillary pressure is about 7 mm of mercury. This pressure is sufficient for exchange of gas between alveoli and blood. 
for histological study of total cross sectional area of all the pulmonary capillaries it can be calculated that when cardiac output is normal blood passes from pulmonary capillaries is about 0.8 second when cardiac output increases this time can be shortened to as little as 0.3 second the dynamic of fluid exchange across the lung capillary membrane are qualitatively the same as for peripheral tissues but quantitatively there are important difference which is at first pulmonary capillary pressure is low which is about 7 mm of mercury in comparison with a considerably high functional capillary pressure in the peripheral tissue which is about 17 mm of mercury secondly interstitial fluid pressure in the lung is slightly more negative than that of peripheral subcutaneous tissues fourthly pulmonary capillaries are leaky to protein molecules so coronal osmotic pressure of pulmonary interstitial fluid is about 14 mm of mercury in comparison with less than half of this value in peripheral tissues alveolar wall are extremely thin and alveolar epithelium covering the alveolar surface is so weak that it can be ruptured by any positive pressure in the interstitial space greater than the alveolar air pressure which allow dumping of fluid from interstitial space into the alveoli so the quantitatively difference of effect pulmonary fluid dynamics these are force tending to cause movement of fluid outwards from the capillaries and into the pulmonary interstitium so here the capillary pressure is 7 mm of mercury interstitial fluid corrosmetic pressure is 14 mm of mercury and negative interstitial fluid pressure is about 8 mm of mercury so total outward force is about 29 mm of mercury here another force tending to cause absorption of fluid into capillaries this force is plasma cordial osmotic pressure which is about 28 mm of mercury so total inward force is about 28 mm of mercury thus normal outward force are slightly greater than inward force which is mean filtration pressure about 1 mm of mercury this causes slight continual flow of fluid from pulmonary capillaries into interstitial space and except for a small amount that evaporates in alveoli this fluid is pumped back into circulation through pulmonary lymphatic system this is the figure which is taken from the book of physiology written by the guyton and hall in the left side hydrostatic and osmotic pressure in capillary and in the right side alveolar membrane here also show the lymphatic vessels that pump fluid from pulmonary interstitial space alveolar is dry why pulmonary capillaries and pulmonary lymphatic systems normally maintain a slight negative pressure in the interstitial space it is clear that whenever extra fluid appear in alveoli it will simply sucked mechanically into lung interstitium through small opening between the alveolar epithelial cell the excess fluid is then carried away through pulmonary lymphatics thus under normal condition alveoli are kept dry except for a small amount of fluid that seeps from the epithelium onto the lining surface of alveoli to keep them moist why occur pulmonary edema pulmonary edema occur the same way that edema occur elsewhere in the body any factor that increase fluid filtration out of the pulmonary capillaries or that impede the pulmonary lymphatic functions and causes pulmonary interstitial fluid pressure to rises from negative fringe into positive fringe which will causes rapid filling of pulmonary interstitial space and alveoli with large number of free fluid the most common causes are left sided heart failure or mitral valve disease or damage of pulmonary blood capillary membrane which is caused by infections such as pneumonia breathing noxious substance such as chlorine gas sulfur dioxide gas etc
each of this mechanism causes rapid leakage of both plasma protein and fluid out of the capillaries and into both lung interstitial space and alveoli. What is the safety factor of pulmonary edema? Pulmonary capillary pressure normally must rise to a value at least equal to the coronal osmotic pressure of plasma inside the capillaries before significant pulmonary edema occur. Pulmonary capillary pressure must rise from normal level of 7 mm of mercury to more than 28 mm of mercury which is normal coronal osmotic pressure which causes pulmonary edema. So here the acute safety factor for against pulmonary edema is 21 mm of mercury. We know about the pulmonary edema. Why not plural effusion? To know about the plural effusion, at first we must know about the plural membrane, which is porous mesenchymal serous membrane through which small amount of interstitial fluid transit continually into the plural space. These fluids carry with them tissue proteins, giving plural fluid a mucoid characteristic, which is what allow extremely easy slippage of the moving lungs. The total amount of fluid in each plural cavity is normally slight, only few milliliters. Whenever the quantity becomes more than barely enough to begin flowing of plural cavity, excess fluid is pumped away by lymphatic vessels which open directly from plural cavity into mediastinum or superior surface of diaphragm or lateral surface of the parietal pleura. Therefore, plural space, which is the space between the parietal and visceral pleura, is called a potential space because it normally is so narrow that it is not obviously a physical space. So, what is plural effusion? Collection of large amount of free fluid into the plural space. Plural effusion is analogous to the edema of fluid in tissues which also can be called edema of plural cavity, which is the cause. Causes are blockage of lymphatic drainage from plural cavity, secondly cardiac failure, thirdly greatly reduced plasma coronal osmotic pressure, fourthly infections or any other causes of inflammation in the surface of plural cavity. Thank you for your patient sharing.